What's up, everybody? And welcome to another edition of High Mythology. The show where we get higher than the Mad King's geese and uh, tell you guys silly stories from mythology and folklore. Uh, yeah, put a little yeah. fun twist on them. A little, little twerk, a little twist, just a little meat meat. <laughs> I would say a lot of the swearing is improvised. A lot of the swearing is just how I talk because... <laughs> <laughs> oh, everyone knows I have a sailor's mouth. There's no uh, doubt yeah. about that. I have a sailor's mouth and a farmer's See, ass. That's why my <laughs> boss keeps me in the back room grooming dogs. You know what I mean? I drop the yeah. f bombs so many times on clients. It is super unprofessional. I've tried. Yeah. I tell my kid all the time, "Don't talk like mommy." Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm here for. Oh, hey, how the fuck are you? Exactly. <laughs> it's been fucking forever. How it's are fucking you? Forever. Well, how's the shit? Is it shitty or is it not as shitty? You're stomping through the mud. Yeah. Just, you fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't go that explicit. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Oh gosh, that's uh, me. Yeah, today we'll bring you bringing you guys some folk tales from uh, you know Latin Latin America, general south of the states all the way through Puerto Rico, uh, I believe Ecuador. So. Hispanic South American, and Indian traditions. Central American, yeah. Post-colonization. See. So I have some from Puerto Rico, you know what I mean? Well, I'll, well, I'm pretty sure I have that on each story where they're from. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, look, <laughs> I just read the title of the first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do right there. It says it next to the... <laughs> right there next to the right, title. Yeah. Oh, gosh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we got some stories, so we're going to jump into them. We're going to have fun. It's yeah. going to be a good time. Yes. Yeah. Hope you're all prepared. Praise Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Praise Apollo. <laughs> Indeed. Oh, uh, yeah. So go ahead and take it away there, Kimpo, with the story number one, the charcoal peddler's chicken. <laughs> Where's it from? Puerto Rico. Hey! Hey! <clears throat> there was a charcoal peddler always down and out, and he would say to God, Please, someday let me have an extra 50 pesos, just an extra 50 to get a chicken. <laughs> I can sit down and eat all by myself and have a conversation with this it. chicken. <laughs> <laughs> and the day came when he had the 50, and he bought the chicken. When he'd put it on the fire and it was still in the pot, a handsomely dressed man stopped by, claiming to be hungry. The peddler asked. Who are you? The man said. I'm Luck. Come to help you eat your chicken. The peddler says. <laughs> get to him. Get scram. You handsome dog. You sexy little piece of meat. <laughs> you don't help me. Luck helps only the rich. The well-dressed man went on, and a moment later, another man, badly dressed, showed up. The peddler asked, Who the fuck are you? Back off my chicken pot. The man replied, <laughs> I'm death. I've come to help you eat your chicken. The charcoal man says, Come on and sit down and let's eat. Take half this chicken and enjoy it. You know, because death treats everyone by the same, rich or poor. Uh, look, maybe a sexy looking, just six pack ab having stupid son of a bitch of a dog, but he isn't faithful to his owner. The end. The end. <laughs> <laughs> so fuck luck and <laughs> praise death. <laughs> <laughs> fuck luck, marry death. <laughs> <laughs> what, was the, what was the third one? <laughs> <I know>. Kill. <laughs> Kill the charcoal man. <laughs> Kill the charcoal man's <laughs> chicken. <laughs> okay, yeah, that was a fun little uh, little intro there. Get into it. Story number two from New Mexico, Mexico, New Mexico. The three councils. <clears throat> A man in need of work set out from home, leaving his wife and his six-year-old son. In a remote country, he found a master who hired him and treated him well. Years had passed, and he went to the master for his pay. They had agreed that he would be given uh, 12 bags of money for 12 years of work. Damn. <laughs> 12. 12 bags of money for 12 years of work. 
The master knew what the man had come for and said, (laughs) Very well, you've earned your wages, but let me ask you, would you rather have seven bags of money or three councils? Mm? Sorry, that was supposed to be 12. 12 It was really high when I was looking at numbers. (laughs) Well, seven bags of money with more bags of money after that. (laughs) The man thought for a moment, and I think we'll call him Paco at this point. (laughs) Which would be better, he said aloud. Uh, yeah, I'll take the three counsels. The good master answered. <laughs> well, you've chosen well, and here they are. The first ones, never leave the road for a bypath. Just stay on the main road. <laughs> the second, never question what don't concern you. The third... Never act on the first piece of news. Always wait for the second piece of news to come through. (laughs) (laughs) The man took the counsels to heart, and when he had bid his master farewell, he started for home. After traveling a few leagues, he came to a spot where a couple of paths branched off. Some men were standing there, and one of them said, Come along with us. Take this shortcut. You'll get home faster. The man refused, remembering his first of his master's counsels, never leave the road for a bypath. He walked another league when he heard shouts. Somebody was running up behind him. It was one of the men who had been at the fork in the road. The man was wounded and said, Oh, we were attacked by highwaymen, and they murdered my friends. It definitely wasn't me. (laughs) I was the only one who got away. Then the traveler congratulated himself, <laughs> realizing that his master's good counsel had saved him from oh, death. Oh, yeah, good job there, Paco. You did good. <laughs> he walked on, traveling the main road, and in a while he came to a house, large and grand, yet strangely quiet. He knocked at the door, and a tall, thin man received him uh, courteously, cor- cor- courteously, 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 inviting him in and entering... Uh, inviting him to enter and make himself comfortable. He settled himself in a chair, and the hours went by. He didn't dare move a muscle for fear of breaking the silence. When it was time for dinner, the thin man appeared in the doorway and motioned him to come forward. This is some awkward (laughs) shit. Mm, Come forward. Mm, Candy. Mm, Candy Candy this way. He led him into a magnificent dining hall, to a table laden with all delicacies that you could ever wish for. There were wines and liquors of all kinds, rare game meats, pastries, and fruits from different countries. The dishes were gold and silver, and the knives and spoons were silver. When the two men had seated themselves, the host's wife came into the room carrying a skull. She placed it on the table with loving care and began to eat food from it contained dripping it with her fingers. The guest could barely conceal his amazement and was at the point of asking (laughs) what it all meant. Did she just lick the skull? (laughs) When he remembered the second of the three counsels, never question what doesn't concern you. (laughs) Afterwards, the host directed him to a bedchamber and left him to spend the night, terrified at what he had seen at dinner. (laughs) Well, I'm taping my butthole up tonight. (laughs) (laughs) Tape it up every night. You you don't know. You never know. Uh, The next morning, he was called to breakfast, and he witnessed the same thing. The woman appeared with the skull and sat down to eat from it, and the guest pretended not to notice. (laughs) The the host just sat there, not blinking, staring at him the whole time. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, The guest pretended not to notice, and when it was time for him to be on his way, he said his goodbyes, and the host drew him aside and said, (laughs) I'm surprised you never asked about the skull. Why not? Paco says, Oh, yeah, yeah, it's because uh, some guy once told me a thing over here that I told him I would listen to. You know, he said, "Uh, don't question what don't concern you and whatnot. The host says, Oh, well, since you didn't ask, I'm going to tell you. My wife and I aren't of this world. During our time on Earth, we were some rich fucking Karen bitches, greedy and all entitled and shit. (laughs) And God punished us by putting us here, where my wife would take every meal from my human skull. Every traveler would stop at the door, and each guest would ask, Oh, why the skull? (laughs) (laughs) He would go to his death. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, 
I want to see how many people of Paris were asking the question you never asked. Jesus. Now rub my nipples. <laughs> the Lord of the Manor took him into a cavernous cellar piled with cadavers, skeletons, and loose skulls, some freshly dead and some old and dry. And he continued to say, <laughs> We have remained here prisoners in this terrible place. Waiting for the traveler who would ask no questions. Mm, you are that traveler, and now we are free. <laughs> With those words, he handed his guests the key to the manor and said, mm, Great riches are hidden here. Now they are yours. <laughs> I've got some pretty dirty nudes <laughs> under the pillows. Don't look at the pictures I have under your pillow. <laughs> you may want the bands of ones under the <laughs> yeah. Burn my sheets. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to. As he was speaking, he vanished together with his wife, and the traveler found himself alone with all that wealth. He was not sorry to have followed his master's counsels. Seeing how rich he was, he set off contentedly for home, where he had left his wife and son. As he approached his house, it was getting dark. The lights were on, and he looked through the window and saw his wife reclining on the bed caressing the hair of a young priest who was holding the woman's head in her arms. The poor traveler, finding his wife's in the arms of a lover, was about to rush in and plant a knife in the man's throat, and then he remembered the last of the master's three counsels, never act on the first piece of news. Restraining himself, he went to the door and knocked. The woman and the priest came to greet him, and when he asked, Oh, hey, I, uh, sorry for bothering you two there. Uh, who, who the fuck is this guy? Uh, His wife replies. Oh, this priest is your son who was still a boy when you left home. The traveler embraced his wife and his son joyfully and told him all that had happened in his travels, how he had received the three counsels and how he had, uh, and how he had made his way home. Wow, I was having issues reading this for <laughs> Then together they went off to the manor house to enjoy their wealth. The master, who had wished to reward the good worker by giving him three counsels, was our Lord Jesus Christ. The end. Oh, uh, plot twist. No, redneck motherfucker. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, <laughs> so Jesus had indentured servants in this story. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, where's the whopper? <laughs> Twelve years. You get your child gets to grow up without a father. Six it years old. So much years, better. He, he got riches from that house. Yeah, but he also had a weird, skinny Swedish man sort of molest him. <laughs> and every morning That's... when he woke, the tape on his butthole was loose. <laughs> <laughs> he moved on. He said. He moved on. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, really, all he got out of that was riches. He just didn't get killed and got riches. And if the guy had paid him... And he almost he killed his son. Yeah, exactly. He would have had 12 years with his son and the riches. The riches of being there for he your child. He had to child. hit the road for 12 years to try to make money. <laughs> Maybe he owed a lot of money. 12 bags of gold seems pretty hefty. It's a hefty heft. I would have taken the gold. <laughs> I would have been okay with that, too. <laughs> okay. Yeah, moving on. Saying. Moving on. Story number three, the meth king out of Florida. Sounds the the mad right. king. <laughs> the mad king's meth. An evil meth-headed king <laughs> woke up one morning in a frenzy. As soon as he settled his wits and announced that he would get rid of all the old people in his kingdom. He called his soldiers and gave the order. Head the gray, let them roll. <laughs> the order was carried out. All the old people were beheaded with ex the exception of one man who took cover at his son's ranch far out into the bush. Rumors of an escaped filtered back to court, and the king sent soldiers deep into the countryside to find out the stories were true and to take no mercy on the lone survivor. The soldiers arrived at the ranch where the old father was hiding. And they turned the house upside down, but in vain. The son had hidden his father in a bunker outside. The soldiers returned empty-handed and said, 
It is of no use, your majesty. The old man is lying low. Sounds a lot like World War II. World War II. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Furious, the king ordered the, his son uh, to be brought to the palace. When the son arrived, he denied everything, and the king, who was no fool, asked, Do you live in the bush? <laughs> the My geese said, come from the bush. <laughs> <laughs> it's really very... I would say it's more downy. <laughs> it's more downy. <laughs> no, uh, I do not have a bush. <laughs> the son said. No, I do not have a bush. No, Clean says, shaven. Oh, yes. No, I am from the bush, but. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. The king says. <laughs> <laughs> Though your pubic mound is totally bare. <laughs> <laughs> I have mine plucked by my royal geese. <laughs> Jesus, it's gonna hurt. <laughs> yeah. ah. <laughs> That's what I should have done for the soldier. My penis <laughs> the soldier more like said, a tiger. Ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then find me the herb of all cures. Just bring me a big old bag of herbs here by tomorrow. Or, you know, I'll, I'll have you skinned alive by geese. The young man went back to the ranch and told his wife what the king had commanded. She said, <laughs> Oh, you, but you should ask your father about that. I don't want anything to do with that geese guy. And he ran to his father's hideout and said, Father, I must find the herb of all cures. The old man says, Well, that's easy. There's a dispensary right down the road. He explained where d where it grew, and his son brought it to the palace the next day, still fresh. Use my stamp card and get me some stamps. <laughs> the king's suspiciousness were strengthened. He thought, Only a wise elder would know where to find weed this bad. <laughs> then he proposed another test and said, <laughs> Bring me the king of all the birds, the lord geese. <laughs> <laughs> Do it by this time tomorrow or I'll string you up and tickle you with goose feathers. <laughs> the son ran back to the bush and he said, <laughs> <laughs> Father, I must catch the king of all birds and they'll string me up. The old man says, Oh, yeah, they're cheesy. And he explained where to find the bird, and his son brought it to the palace in the nick of time. <laughs> Just go down to the pet store. <laughs> <laughs> on 37th of May. <laughs> The king uh, now knew that the son had lied. <laughs> Only an elder would have been able to find the king of all birds. <laughs> Not to be defied, the king set a trap to catch the young man once and for all. He demanded, So oh, thanks for the bird. Now I'm at war with his kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> My geese have all revolted. <laughs> Come back tomorrow, and uh, when I see you, you'll have to be inside and outside the palace. Mm, otherwise, death! The son rushed back to his father and asked, <laughs> Father, how can I be inside the palace and outside the palace? Uh, when he got back to the father's side, uh, sorry, uh, the father explained how it could be done, and when the son <laughs> appeared in front of the king the next day, he had tied one end of a rope to the edge of the palace roof and the other end around his waist and was swinging in the palace doorways and back out again. <laughs> Still not satisfied, the king said, <laughs> Come back tomorrow with your wife and your dog. When they arrived the next day, the king handed the young man a whip and ordered him to beat the dog until he told him where his father was Jesus. hiding. The master used the whip, but the faithful dog refused to speak. The king ordered, <laughs> I know that fucking dog talks. <laughs> <laughs> I swear it. <laughs> I swear on my last goose. <laughs> now flog your wife. But the wife spoke up. Oh, no, I don't need a flogging. I'll just, all I need is a cigarette. He's, he's in the bunker. He's in the bunker, labeled bunker, that's right behind our house. Surprised your goose men missed it. <laughs> With all haste, the guards brought the old man before the king, and the king put his hands on the old man's shoulders and said, <laughs> You raised a good son. Now, death by goose! <laughs> then he 
uh, repented his sins, calmed down, and pardoned the old father. Okay. Together, <laughs> the father, the son, and the son's wife and the dog went back to the ranch where they lived out for the rest of their days. He flogged his wife every day. <laughs> every day. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's horrible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just added it's that. like that's the happy okay. It's like that's the <laughs> happy added, end of the story. It was very and nice. then he went home and he beat his wife. Oh, she started smoking the meth. Uh, well, <laughs> that's all out, she did. She beat him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, story number four. We're going back to back to Puerto Rico. Mm-hmm. On this one. A mother's curse. It's a really short story, don't worry. Well, sir, a woman was standing, was starching clothes, and when she turned her back for a moment, her little boy was putting his dirty hands in the tub and spoiling the starch. When the mother saw what he had done, she flew into a rage and said, Go to the devil! Hardly had she spoken the words when a whirlpool, a whirlwind, came up and darkened the sky, and she was frightened and began to tremble. The storm was over in a few minutes, but when she looked for her little boy, he wasn't there. She wept bitterly, and she called his name, but it was of no use. The devil had taken her child. One day, as she passed by the woods, she noticed a little pile of bones. She brought them back to her house and buried them, and after that, at night, a flapping of wings (laughs) could be heard near the house. Sometimes dead is better. And the croaking (laughs) of a large bird. Uh, A lot of history down that road. As if asking for something. People say it's the woman's child who came, who comes, especially on windy nights, to ask for his mother's forgiveness. Oh, shit. The end. The end. That's just... <laughs> Fucked up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mom's curse, so you don't tell your Sometimes kid. Sometimes that is better. <laughs> <laughs> she took him to the old burial ground out in the woods. I mean... <laughs> uh, there are better things to say. <laughs> Uh, moving on. Oh, man. Maybe she on. just didn't know she was a witch. She didn't, know she, she didn't know she had those kind of powers. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Go to hell. Oh, it happened. I'm a millionaire. This is how the uh, X Men got uh, their powers, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> exactly. Uh, story number five The Hermit and the Drunkard from Ecuador. Hey-o. hey Two brothers were born in the country town. One of them became a hermit and went to live in the mountaintop where an angel of mercy dropped down at mealtimes to give him his daily bread. bread. The other brother became a hopeless drunkard, and from the time, from that time on, he had a special place in the underworld where he slept on a bed made of iron, though he didn't realize it, uh, free, having convinced himself he was still living in his own house. Every day he went down out, um, he went out with enough money in his pockets to buy a bottle and cover his other expenses. Along the route that he always took, day after day, there was a picture of the Virgin of Lords hanging the Virgin of Lords, hanging from the urn in front of the house of a devout family. As he passed by, he never failed to tip his hat, saying, No, dear dear Virgin, don't forget me. Sometimes he was so drunk, he missed her completely. But if he did, he would (laughs) ask... Just looking at a blank wall. Uh, this Virgin... (laughs) Sometimes he was so drunk, he missed her completely. But if he did, he would ask a passerby for directions and retrace his steps in order to greet her, always with the same words. The the virgin, uh, uh, forget, (laughs) man. One day as he passed through, (laughs) I'm sorry, this is bringing back memories. Um, One day as he passed through a particular neighborhood, he heard the sound of weeping. He stopped to see what was the matter, and a man had died. And there was a wake in progress. Entering the house, he asked to speak to the widow. When she came forward, she reached into his, or he reached into his pocket, wow, and gave her a handful of money. He said, uh, 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 take, take, this, take this money and uh, feed, feed your children and stuff. You know, don't, don't be scared. Don't be scared. Shh. 
I've got to help you. <laughs> <laughs> then he saw that the uh, widow was pregnant and on the last stages at that. And he added, Oh, shit, it's not mine, right? <laughs> I just shushed it. I didn't do it. I just pop, touched your lips. <laughs> and I know it's when a child is born, huh? He's, uh, I'm going to take him because it's my son now. Shh. I can't take care of him. From then on, <laughs> every time he passed that way, he left money for the widow. When she gave birth to the little boy, he paid for all the expenses. As the child grew and began to speak, he was taught by his mother to say Papa whenever they saw the drunkard. Until finally the mother said, I like to imagine that they've been sleeping together for months and he just keeps freaking, he's like, oh, that child comes out, it's going to be my son. She's like, I know. I've told you this several times. <laughs> <laughs> the mother would say, Aki, they come, he is yours. Mm. Ah. The drunkard picked up the boy and carried him off on, Ooh, carried him off in his poncho. <laughs> As soon as they got to the drunkard's home in the underworld, the man passed out on his iron bed, while the boy ran around and around in the bed saying, Ha 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 ha! This is a place to sleep. Then he touched it and burned his fingers. Astonished, he looked ah. under the bed and saw a fire burning. He shook his adopted father to wake him up, saying, Papa! Papa! Your bed is on fire! Suddenly, the man saw what he had never seen before, and in a panic, he scooped up the boy and ran with him back to his mother's house. He said, uh, You should probably just raise yourself. Well, probably it'll be easier for both of us. Just, uh, had to take, take off five bucks. Here's five bucks. <laughs> uh, yeah, I might never come back. I don't know. <laughs> in desperation, he ran on until he came to a river. He threw himself into the water, picked up a heavy stone, and began pounding it against his chest. He begged the virgin lords to forgive his sin. In an answer, two angels descended and carried him into the sky. About the same time, his brother, the hermit, started wasting away with hunger. The angel of mercy had stopped the daily deliveries, and after a week, God himself took shock to the situation and gave the angels an order. <laughs> Isn't that it's kind of a dick move? It's like it'd be one thing if they hadn't been feeding him forever, but he's I just mean, like he doesn't know how to feed himself. He's like, what? What am I supposed to eat out here in the woods? Uh, out every day there's a loaf of bread that just perfectly fills me up all day. <laughs> it's a loaf of miracle bread. There's no more miracle bread. Hey man, Do I eat you rocks? Don't, <laughs> you don't go out into the world. That's not my fault. He's just eating rocks. I guess that's what you eat, right? <laughs> I mean, I suppose. God says, Here, take some bread to the hermit. Tell him his brother was saved, and we were busy celebrating and partying, and we totally forgot about his ass out there. And also tell him he should probably, like, stop eating rocks, because that's going to hurt coming out. Hearing this from the angel, angel the jealous brother cried out, Don't you know? <laughs> don't you know, don't you know my brother's a mugger and a thief? If he can be saved, I should be saved twice. And I'm gonna keep eating these rocks, goddammit. Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> no sooner had the words left his mouth than the hermit was handed to the demons in the underworld, where from then on he slept in the same iron bed that was formerly reserved for his brother the thief. <laughs> the end. The end. At least he gets to leave every day. I mean, I, yeah, this guy not to not even yeah. <laughs> permanent slaughter. Yeah, <laughs> the director didn't even note it. <laughs> <laughs> Your bed's on fire, Papa. Just let me sleep. The room is spinning. <laughs> How much do you drink, Papa? <laughs> Go out to the store and get your papa a pack of smokes. <laughs> Story number six. Yes. You know what that look is? Move, moving on. Story number six. Yes. Yes. All right. Story number six. The noble woman's daughter and the charcoal woman's son from Cuba. Not to be confused with the charcoal man's chicken. This is a good story, by the way. You should like, subscribe, share. 
Oh, yeah. Like, All that good shit. Share, follow. And it's our last story. It's our last story of the night. Sorry. Final story. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> In a faraway country, I can't remember which one. Oh, there you was... son of a bitch. <laughs> well, it wasn't Cuba. It wasn't Cuba. <laughs> there, there was, was a... a faraway country like uh, <laughs> South Cuba. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, there was a rushing river with a castle behind it and beautiful gardens in every direction. In the castle lived a noble woman named Maria, <laughs> who was expecting a child any day. This child, she thought, would be all of her happiness, and she was predicting great things for its future. One afternoon, while walking in the gardens, she passed a woman of the village who had just delivered some charcoal. The charcoal woman was also expecting a child. And when she saw the noble woman, she stopped and said, Hey, 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 hi. <laughs> <laughs> like, how, how cool would it be if, like, I had a, you had a daughter and I had a son and they would marry each other and then we would be stuck next to each other. I know I just met you just passing by, but I <laughs> think that would be pretty neat, like, if you were stuck inviting me to all of your events for the rest of your life. Oh, we could share birthdays, Yeah, you know. just, just because... Because that shit gets expensive. Just because <laughs> my son banged your daughter and he didn't pull out. <laughs> <laughs> the haughty noble woman said nothing and turned her back, but she could not get the charcoal woman's words out of her head. A few days later, she in fact gave birth to a daughter, and then she summoned a trusted servant and said, Go immediately to the charcoal woman. If she has had a daughter, let her be. But if she has a son, you must put the child to death. As <laughs> proof, bring me its tongue and its little finger. <laughs> she was that anti. I will not invite this woman to my fancy <laughs> parties. <laughs> <laughs> the servant made its way to the charcoal woman's hut. And what should be there but the pretty little boy, all ruddy and blue-eyed, just like an angel. In the moment, a poor mother, the poor mother realized why the servant had come. She clung to the child with all of her force, but the man snatched him and ran off. The trusty servant raised his knife, but it was an instant that struck him with shame. He could not kill the child. Yet he knew that her ladyship would put him to death if he had failed her. So he cut off the baby's little finger... And then he killed a puppy that was passing by. Jesus! And I cut thought its he was going to be redeemed. He cut its tongue oh, out. <laughs> Gently, he laid the child in a basket, patted it with straw, and placed it on the river so the current would carry it off somewhere. Willow. <laughs> it's like a story of Moses meets Snow White. Meets Willow. 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 <laughs> when he returned, his mistress asked, did you do what I had told you? And he says, Milady, here's the proof. The noble woman was well satisfied and had a sign put up on her castle gate saying, What God made, I destroyed. Now, the king and the queen of this country were wise rulers who lived well. Yet their happiness was not complete, for they had been unable to have a child. Kept putting it in the butt. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't in the right hole, man. I don't know dull geometry or geography. Well, you can't put the goose there. It's not going <laughs> to. Yeah. One day, as it happened, the king went uh, walking by the river and found the basket with the charcoal woman's little boy. He brought the child to the queen and said, Look what I found in the river. <laughs> this will be our new son. Unless you also, unless you would like to raise these geese eggs I found, I feel like that would make for more interesting of a story. <laughs> the queen was overjoyed and ordered the little golden finger to be made for the child. In time, the boy grew into a manly young prince. And when he reached the age of 20, the king and queen took him aside for a talk. Birds and the bees. <laughs> no. They told him how he would be found, how he had been found in the river and how they had come to love him as their own flesh and blood. I still wish we would have kept the geese. <laughs> and made, that, made him their heir. The prince adored the king and the queen, but now he began wishing he could find his real parents. He wanted to help them, and the thought that they might be poor suffering somewhere made him sad. The king saw this and asked, What's troubling you? His son says. <laughs> Sire. 
You know how much I live. 20 year old. He's a 20 year old. (laughs) He's 20 years old. Sire, (laughs) you know how much I love you. (laughs) But I must search the kingdom for my parents. I'm sure I can find them. When I do, I'll bring them home with me. and There'll be happiness all around. The king consulted with the queen. They ended up giving permission for the search and sent the prince off with an escort of 20 knights and 20 squires. The prince was received with open arms in all the towns he rode through, yet he himself was sad. His parents were nowhere to be found, and at last he reached the town where the noblewoman lived and took lodging at the at an inn across the street from her castle. The first thing he noticed was the sign on the castle gate. What God made, I destroyed. <laughs> he asked the inn what the sign meant, but no one could tell him. That afternoon, as he stood at the window staring at the inscription, a radiant young beauty appeared in one of the castle balconies. The prince was dazzled. He asked, Who is she? Uh, Who the hell is she? (laughs) Tell me, man. He was told it was the bitch's daughter. His heart leaped. Her ladyship had invited him to the castle at the evening for a reception in his honor. Oh, yeah, he was told. Okay, sorry. Uh, naturally, he would be introduced to his her daughter, you know. Uh-huh. We're going to bank. It's going to happen. The hour arrived, and when the daughter met the prince, she fell in love with him, just as he had fallen in love with her. For, as I have said, he was handsome and manly. He was handsome and manly. <laughs> uh, and with everything else, but the prince was naturally good. He mingled not only with the guests, but with the servants. And when he talked with the old retainer, Keener, retainer, who had set him afloat on the river, he happened to ask, Tell me, what is the meaning of that sign on the castle gate? Having noticed the prince's golden finger, the servant knew without asking that he was speaking to the son of the charcoal woman. He said, I'll explain if you promise to keep this quiet. When the story had been told, the two made plans to meet the following morning. The prince says, Wait for me at the edge of the woods. Then take me to the charcoal woman's butt hut. (laughs) Her butt hut. (laughs) (laughs) But don't tell a soul, do you hear? The old retainer says, I heard you. The next day, when the charcoal woman saw the two men approaching, she went up to them wearily, wear, wearily, wearily, and asked, Hey, what, what the hell do you guys want? What are you doing here? The prince says, Madam, remember the little son who was taken from you at birth? I am that son. Nice. The poor woman couldn't speak. She threw her arms around the prince, and he said, But don't tell a soul. Wait here until I send for you. The prince returned to the castle to ask the noblewoman for her daughter's hand in marriage. The answer was an immediate yes. Yeah. It had been her ladyship's dream for her daughter to marry in the royal heir and become his princess. On the day of the wedding, mysterious guest arrived, heaven, heavily veiled. When the ceremony was over, the prince said, <laughs> Madam, remove your veil. And there she stood, the charcoal woman, face to face with her son's new mother-in-law. The charcoal woman said, Look at this. uh, I told you we would be besties. Yeah, we're (laughs) going to be hanging out all the time. This is the son you took from my arms. God saved him from death. And now I'm going to be at all of your parties and all of your events. I'm going to show up here just randomly for dinner and expect you to have cooked enough for me. (laughs) I'm always going to be bumming money off of you for cigarettes. Vodka, things like that. (laughs) I might even hit one of your geese with my car. (laughs) I drive a Ford Fiesta and one of the headlights are out. (laughs) So sometimes I don't see things when I'm coming home from the bar. And then also there's the thing that I'm also very drunk. (laughs) And I hotbox the cigarette smoke inside. So it just kind of lingers in the air while I'm driving through. So really, I can't see a thing. (laughs) I'm also technically blind in my right eye. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> she just keeps going. Yeah. Her ladyship, hearing the truth, choked on her own rage and fell over dead. The princess at first was sad. <laughs> it's like, just, the whole time just... the lady's talking, she's sitting there just trying to choke. If I just swallow right, I can... <laughs> almost. 
<laughs> I just joke myself. <laughs> the princess at first was sad, for this was her mother. But she dried her tears and said to the prince, <laughs> together with the king and the queen and the charcoal woman, lived happily from that day on. <laughs> Thank you, Cuba. <laughs> And also, I do this thing sometimes where I take a bunch of ambience <laughs> <laughs> late at night, and then I just kind of wake up in I try strange to keep places. Awake yeah. As long as I can. So, if you wake up to me standing over you in your <laughs> sleep, don't nudge me because I will attack if you wake me. Mm-hmm. That used to be me. <laughs> used to be me. Can you tell which side of the family he got his deep voice from? <laughs> oh, you have your mother's voice. I knew you were me. <laughs> yes, mother, I do. <laughs> I've been smoking since I was eight. <laughs> trying to keep up with you. <laughs> trying to keep up with you. <laughs> <laughs> but not knowing that that's where I got my addict, my addiction from. My addiction from. Yeah. <laughs> Now let's go watch the Maury Povich show together. I hear somebody's going to be somebody's father, or maybe not. I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, God. We definitely don't know who your father is. <laughs> we, yeah. Who's the father? I don't know. Maybe we should go on the Maury Povich show. <laughs> Do you know how many deliveries I make a day? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's just say back in the day before you were born, your mother was all over this town. <laughs> Any number of them could By the way, we might need to get one of those 23 and me's because I definitely banged that lady's husband. (laughs) You gotta make sure you two aren't related. (laughs) Oh, that'd be so good. Now that she's dead, I'm gonna take her shoes. Even though they (laughs) don't fit, I'll stretch them. It's fine. (laughs) It's fine. Cut some holes in them. (laughs) They're gonna become flip flops if they have to. I have trouble walking in heels due to my manly calves. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I'm built like a kangaroo. Whoa. 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 <laughs> Those things are fucking muscular. Right now. <laughs> yeah, they're, <laughs> they're freakishly muscular. Oh, now. Thank God. you. Well, well that, yeah, that's yes. tonight's episode. I hope all you folks enjoyed it. Hope you had fun. Uh, hope you stuck around till the end. Um. Yeah. Be sure to like, subscribe, follow. Uh, check know, out our merch shop. Check out our merch shop. Teespring dot com slash high dash mythology dash merch. Find us merch. on. Uh, find us on Twitter yes. at Howley underscore boys H A O L E underscore B O Y S. It's probably where we're most active. Also, yes. Howley Boys Productions on Facebook. All one word. Um, yeah. yeah, that's how you can find us in those places. Sweet. Yeah. Um, have a good night, everyone. Have a good night, everyone. Bye. We'll see you next week. <laughs>